Let's welcome Paul to the stage. So, Paul, tell us a little about yourself and your lovely wife, Phyllis, who didn't want to be here tonight. <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're grandparents, so she had to pick up our granddaughter and take her to dance lessons. Okay. Priorities, I understand that one. So we got priorities, we got yeah. priorities. Well, uh, I've been in oil and gas for 39. I was in oil and gas for 39 years. Uh, I'm retired now due to real estate and due to the Yay. fact that the yeah, That's a good thing, not a bad down. thing. <laughs> <laughs> when they shut down, I had things going for me, so I was able to uh, just retire in 2016. Okay. So. And um, so how long have you been in Lifestyles, and how did you end up here? Well, I've been in Lifestyles actually since 2006. Oh, wow. So I've been here a long time and uh, I wound up just listening to the radio and uh, decided to come check it out. Everything sounded good. And so I just started investing while I was working because I was in, like I said, oil and gas and just having a great time. Okay. In cool. oil and gas. Yeah, so like Isaac, Isaac, I mentored Isaac. Uh, Jamie back there said I mentored her. She's been up doing a case study. I didn't mentor Paul. Paul joined Lifestyles in 06. I didn't join until I think 2013 or 14. So, Paul, tell us a little bit about, tell the audience a little bit about how we know each other. Okay, I think we met a long, long time ago when we were in junior high school. Oh, wow. <laughs> you go way back. We were in the same homeroom together in junior high school. We went to the same high school. We went to University of Houston together. And Sorrell was the best man in my wedding, and I was the best man in his wedding. Oh, wow. Here's <laughs> wedding pictures from the 70s, guys. <laughs> Yeah, it's oh. rare right next to me. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's Paul's wedding on the right and mine on the left. Hey, you had hair. I had hair back then. <laughs> this all fell out last year. <laughs> yeah, I had afro and platform <laughs> shoes. <laughs> the good thing is that through uh, like 40 years, these pictures have aged. So um, what you don't see is my then wife made my groomsmen wear mint green tuxedos, head to toe, mint green tuxedos. So luckily the, the coloring is faded out, so now they're just <laughs> white. Those guys hated me like, with those tuxedos. I, I had nothing to do with it, so. And so um, this is Paul and Phyllis. Yeah, we've been married 44 years. Yeah, and uh, all right. I haven't, but that's all I'm gonna say about that part of it. <laughs> So that's how Paul and I have known each other. We've, we've been in and out of contact through the last 40 years. And uh, at one point, we lost contact. So in 2013, no, 2015, I'm on a multifamily road trip, and we're roaming through uh, individual apartments. I look over, and I said, Paul? <laughs> so we reconnected through Lifestyles Unlimited about, what, five or six years ago now. So, so I haven't actually mentored Paul because he was actually steps ahead of me, but that's our connection. So, so tell us about this property. Well, it's a duplex in uh, the south side of Houston. We usually call it Sunnyside, if anybody's familiar with the area. And uh, I had one of our realtors call on one of those uh, blasts that, that he just talked about. And I have more houses in that area on the south side of Houston. So I uh, called up, put my name on the list, and when we all went out to take a look at it, uh, I decided I was going to buy it right then. Okay. And so a little bit about this property. It's uh, This is a duplex, is that correct? It's a duplex. Yeah, so it's a duplex. And it's a um, appraised value 220. You bought it for about 174. After closing costs and rehab, uh, you were, have a net equity of 31,000. Out of pocket was 40,000. Again, it's a duplex, so it's a little higher price property. Uh, and even at that, your um, return on capital gain is 78%. Um, rent for both properties, 21 to 50 total, and 825 cash flow. So you have a 24% cash on cash return. So again, tax free. Tax free. Gotta make sure you say that. Tax free cash return. So and actually, the, the cash out of pocket would have been less because, you know, we tell you everything. Uh, everything sounds like it goes smooth all the time, right? <laughs> this didn't go smooth. Okay, don't scare him now. <laughs> <laughs> but, no, but tell us what happened though. So. But but the reality of it is. I, I was refinancing my house at another property, 
and this one was was the last one. I hadn't filed my taxes for 2019 before this one got through. So the first two got refinanced, and when they filed my taxes, I had uh, a two hundred thousand dollar loss. So that's a after, good thing. Huh? That's a good thing. Yeah, that's a very good thing. That's a very good thing. <laughs> But it, and it was a paper loss because most of it was depreciation. Right, right. And but the the, the finance company hold up a little bit higher. The finance company wouldn't wouldn't do the loan. You need to find another lender that understands that. Yeah. So so they wouldn't do the loan. So I I wind up actually going to a banker that was a friend of mine yep. getting a bank loan. Good. And and getting it done that way, and so I wound up paying forty thousand out of pocket, but. If if it had gone smooth as it was supposed to, it probably would have been twenty five thousand dollars. See, pocket. I could have probably got you a better lender, so you know. But you didn't talk to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. but but okay. it was kind of strange and crazy to me because I had a twenty two hundred thousand dollar paper loss because of depreciation and some other things. That's why the I same the year yeah. I sold the property and I had a one point eight million capital gain. <laughs> Man, you have all these third world problems. These people in the room. <laughs> but they, they were just looking at that because I didn't have a job and all of that kind of okay. good stuff. So okay. I uh, made some other moves to try to get the property. All right. So we're just going to quickly look you at You like his problems is he made 20% return, 78% return. He's complaining about it. He's not complaining. He's explaining. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not complaining. I'm just saying, you know. All right. So you've been doing this for a while and you have a number of properties here. So you can, I'm not going to run through all these. You can see them on the screen. We have several screens to go through with Paul here. So that's, um, that's his first four properties. And you can see the equity and the uh, cash flow there. And that's his next four. You have one with a zero annual cash flow. And that's the house my son stays in. No. <laughs> Hey, yeah, you know, just so you know, Sorrell will give you a three-day notice if you want to evict him. Okay, I am going to have to start mentoring Paul yes. now. <laughs> we don't rent to relatives. <laughs> he has two grand, my grandkids. Oh. I'm not going to see him. <laughs> so he just pays the note <laughs> and, and takes care of the house. So. Uh, okay. All right. We're still going to talk. So. <laughs> <laughs> And that's uh, four more properties that Paul has. And you can see these numbers are adding up quickly. So we get to a total of $97,000 in cash flow and $681,000 in equity. Yeah, Paul. <laughs> tax free. Tax free. That's like $150,000 of your job if you had taxes. That's right. Okay. And Paul mentioned he sold a property. Paul's also an a IRO, independent realtor, rental owner. You've been cool. a, um, a, a um, yeah. Partnership or lead investor, yeah. your passive uh, investor? Not lead, lend okay. lead. I, I've had a, when I first joined uh, in 2006, the first deal I actually bought was a 75 unit apartment complex. That Starting was, slow, huh? That was my first deal out the door. They showed how <laughs> I many, told me to get my money out the IRA and buy the apartment complex. And so that's what I did. And that's why I was working at uh, my job downtown. So at lunchtime, I would go to the property and sit there, <laughs> eat lunch with my wife, and <laughs> my cousin was my, my, my maintenance uh, supervisor, and I had two, two other maintenance guys, so we would just kind of chill out. Okay. And so I, I kept that to 2013, and, and then I sold it, and then I went to a partnership with just me and, and uh, one other person, and we bought 135 units in Pasadena. And that's what we sold in, in 2019, and that's what I had the, the capital gains on, the 1.8 million capital gains. And I was trying to do a, twin, a 1031 exchange uh, with another guy. Again, I was sometimes just kind of unlucky, so that didn't work out. So I wound up buying a 20-unit a in Willis by myself, so I'm an IRO. I, I, I guess I'm just more of an independent person. <laughs> so, uh, I have uh, so, so, so you were unhappy when you made that 1.8 million? No, I wasn't unhappy. Okay. <laughs> I, I, I just I had a hard time trying to spend. Because you had to pay some taxes. Yeah. <laughs> I had a hard time trying to spend it all. So, Paul, in 2006, I don't know if we were here at the other building, but you were sitting in this audience. Did you have any real estate experience? In 2006, I when you joined Lifestyles. 
Yeah, actually, I did. Oh, hold the mic up. Hold the mic up. Actually, I did because uh, my favorite uh, game when I was a, a, a youngster was Monopoly. <laughs> okay. We played Monopoly every day during the summer. And and so during the years before I joined Lifestyles, I had four uh, rent houses. So naturally, when I joined Lifestyles, instead of buying another rent house, what did I have to buy? A hotel. A hotel. <laughs> So the apartment was the hotel, so that's what I go. did. Yeah. But anyway, you started at some point with nothing and, I mean, no real estate experience, and you've gotten right. to, to this point. So for everybody that's new, this is what you can do. So. Yes, and uh, I'm in uh, uh, five passive deals also. Okay. Yeah. okay. All right, so um, yeah, we asked you who was on your team. Obviously, I wasn't your mentor, like I said, but <laughs> that you listed one of our superstar realtors. I saw Alex. Is she here's Alex over here. Alex, Alex is one of our realtors, and Isaac mentioned it. Paul found this property through a realtor. So the Lifestyles Realty team are the best people that you will know, and they bring these type of properties that get you these types of returns. So thanks, Alex, for this one. And Alex is, uh, like I said, one of the superstar realtors. Moon Kim was out front when you were checking in, and there's about a dozen realtors on the team, and these realtors are consistently some of the most productive realtors in the Houston area. And, uh, you know, Moon and... And make sure the folks know online they're not just Houston. Cause you're making, they're not just Houston, yes. We have a San Antonio, Dallas yeah. as well. Yeah, so, and, uh, but, uh, but, but the Lifestyles Realty team is really the people who bring these fantastic opportunities to you because it's hard to go out and find them on your own, so. All right, so let's talk a little bit about your goals and what's next. Well, between now and... Hold the mic up. Between now and, I guess, uh, in the next three years, because I'm 67 now, I'll be 70 then so i'm going to probably convert all the uh single family properties and invest in just multifamily deals and just make everything passive at that point mm -hmm. right now this is what i'm doing you know managing my properties and uh, just kind of rolling and rocking them along the way you know it's it's cool <laughs> well, it's cool so like you said it's not it's not really about again about the money but it's about the lifestyle so i have my time i can do what i want to do i'm a sister minister at, at my church uh, i uh, serve as a chaplain with the houston police department also so and i'm a mentor at one of the uh, junior high schools in in conroe so I get to do what I want to do. My dad is 93 years old, so I have to take care of him. He's in Houston. I have a 95-year-old on in Texas City, so I have to go down there. And like I said, I have a property in Willis. So usually I'm flying down 45 between Willis and Texas City. <laughs> you get away with the tickets because you help out the police. <laughs> and will you believe in charity because you give your son-in-law free free rides too? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. Any questions for Paul? Any microphones? Uh, go ahead. I'll repeat your question. All right. Paul, um, have you thought about buying any properties outside of Texas? The question was, have you thought about buying properties outside of Texas? Yeah, I probably will do that. I, I just saw one that, that came up that uh, somebody just got under contract, so I'm probably going to do that. Yes, sir. Hold on, the microphone's coming to you. With all those properties, I was just curious, are you using property management or are you doing all this management yourself with all these properties? I'm doing it myself. Because I'm retired, I, I don't need the property management. Uh, really, I have a, a couple of guys that work for me when I had the uh, 75 unit, and so we've been knowing each other a long time, and they'll do the maintenance. I have a cousin that's a jack of all trades as far as that. And uh, so when people call me and they need something fixed, I just make sure that the tenant is going to be home. And I send that person there and then they uh, send me an invoice and I sell them the money. So I don't I don't I don't even go. So the next group that's going to come up, we're going to talk multifamily. But, I mean, <clears> I do <throat> that for the single family, too. Okay, so I, I don't go to single families. I, I, I use the same guys, whether it's multifamily or single family. <clears throat> They'll just go take care of it, and, and that's it. So okay. I, don't, I don't have to go. Usually, if we got a property turnover, but most of my tenants stay five, six, seven years as far as single family is concerned. Okay. They, With your single family properties, about how, how much time does it take you to manage your single family properties a month really a month. Uh, really probably about 
five, ten hours maybe. A month. A month. Five hours. I'd like to make a hundred grand a year for five, ten hours a month. Not bad. Give me a hand. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? No other questions? Oh, there's one right there. We'll take a couple of questions. If I could, I'd like to ask uh, Alex Mills that right now in the Houston market or the real estate market, it's really hot. How difficult is it to find you know, properties to, for these people to do what, what he's Microphone's done? Microphone's coming to you, Alex. It's definitely not easy, and you probably can tell by the number of blasts that you see. It's far fewer than it used to be. Um, we used to get properties from the MLS, and now we get most of our properties from wholesalers. Um, we can't compete with the MLS because the purchase price that they're asking for is, is almost retail. And if it is an investment property, they'll just like figure out what the rehab would be, subtract that from it, and then you know offer it at that price. And that's not uh, enough of a price break for us as investors. So it's, it's kind of tough. I mean, there are some times when I don't have anything. And there are some times when I have two or three and you just got to hang on to them for dear life. And then there are also times when you get a shot at them and uh, you work with a wholesaler and you think you got it. And they might call you and say, ah, you know, sorry, one of my coworkers sold it or something. So it's tough. But we're still scouring every day looking for stuff yeah, for you. They're working hard and there are still members buying properties every day. So it's still a great time to, to get in and, and find property. Yeah, isn't it cool to, that our, our realtors said the market was shifting, so they shifted. And now they got all these, you got to realize we have 30 years reputation behind this lifestyle. So a lot of the wholesalers give us first 24 hours to sell a deal to the members rather than it goes out in the market. So we get exclusivity a lot of times on these pocket deals. So it's very powerful. And I would just say if you get an opportunity to get a property, instead of think instead of thinking long and hard about whether or not you're going to get it, you should think long and hard about not whether or not you're not going to get it. You're going to pass it up because you won't always get the opportunity and you got to get in there. You know, if you're going to. Yeah. Once you understand the numbers and evaluate it, it's not an emotional decision. It's a mathematical decision. It, once you learn to take your, your emotions out of this, you'll be really good. That's one of the keys. Okay. Well, thank you, Paul. Awesome.